Well, welcome to the Valley Hoops Insider Podcast. I'm Harry Schrader, editor of the website, valleyhoopsinsider.com, and obviously the host of this show. Glad to be with you today. And we have our good friend Adam Donier on the uh, podcast today. He's from Link Year Academy, and we're going to break down all that that is in just a minute. He's also the author of the great book, Win by Two. Read it. Man, loved it. And uh, anyway, so we might even talk about that a little bit, too, because then we had a follow-up podcast after I read your book. But Adam, uh, really, just thanks for hanging out with us today. Thanks so much for having me. Appreciate you as always, Harry. Uh, t- Win by Two is a little bit of a story about you and a, and a young man that you met in the inner city of Kansas City and ended up becoming great friends. And he was part of a basketball staff with you. Can you give us a kind of a one minute synopsis of that great book? Yeah, I mean, it's just it's just a redemptive story of God getting a hold of a young man's life and everything changing. And so him breaking cycles that he grew up in. And and now his son has been to camp with me for eight years. He was just at summer camp with me again this summer. And he's just grown into a phenomenal young man going to a private school there in Kansas City and looking like he's going to go to a great college. And, and then even post book, I, I just got to marry him and his now his wife, who is the awesome. mother of his son that's in that private school. So it, it's just stuff you can't make up, can't even dream it up. And so uh, I, I haven't told you this, Harry, the movie script just went across my desk. Come on, baby. Week. So yeah, so they're they're out there doing whatever they do in LA. To, some people got excited about it. And I'm just like, it's all new to me. You guys just do what you do. So well, well, listen, if that ever becomes a movie, can I just be a fan in the stands? I have to have a walkthrough in some movie someday. That's my whole goal in life. It's one of my bucket list things. Come on, man. We'll go to the, we'll go to the red carpet if they pull it off. So. <laughs> hey, uh, Link Your Academy, Link Your Prep. Uh, there's a couple different names that I think you guys go by in various places. Just talk about the backstory. You guys started Link Your Prep years ago, unrelated to basketball. Tell us about that. Yeah, so 2011, we actually launched what we call Link Year. And we call it Link Year because it links high school into their next experience. Usually it's college, but it's not always college. I don't think every student should go to college. And I think they have different gifts and settings. And, and we could get into a whole nother conversation about colleges and university, how so many kids are graduating without jobs. But mm. Nevertheless, so Link Year is a one-year post-grad experience to help kids understand better who they are and whose they are, uh, managing their finances, managing their time, learning how to do laundry, learning how to change oil in the car, just things that I think you and I grew up doing in home ec and and different things that they don't see as much. And so we've done that now going into our 12th year of Link Year. And then after our fourth year of Link Year, you know, we talked about this on your show before. I played basketball at Boise State. So I've always been passionate about basketball. It saved me from so many other ills in my life. It just kept me on the straight and narrow. And so I knew I always wanted to start a basketball program here, but I didn't want to be a pop-up like you see with a a lot of other prep or post-grad schools. So the best advice I ever received, Harry, was do the school first. Build the foundation, have the school, and then if it works, then bring sports along. So we did that. So when you have, we started Link Your Prep and Link Your Prep basketball team by year two was extremely successful. One of the guys on that second year team is Mason Jones, who now plays for the Los Angeles Lakers. Well, after uh, seven years of running that, we were able to jump in the high school lane and we just started high school program last year. And now we're going into year two. And the high school is called Link Academy. So the post-grad basketball program is Link Year Prep, and the high school is Link Academy. So the Link Academy, I might get them backwards, but the Link Academy played for the national championship, lost in the national championship game last year. I watched that game. It was spectacular. Your guys were amazing. Well, blown away. Like, to God be the glory, but we're we're the first ever first-year program to make it to the eight-field Geico tournament, and then yet alone – take Mount Verde to the wire in the national championship game. So it was hopefully, amazing. Hopefully, hopefully we can bounce back this year and get it. We'll see. It was amazing to watch. Before we talk about some players, I when I set this up with you, I said, you know, we've got some guys coming into the Missouri Valley Conference, some guys coming into the Ohio Valley Conference. I wanted to talk about those guys. Uh, but then your coach left uh, because he got a, a great job. What are you guys doing to replace Rodney Perry? Yeah, so uh, Rodney Perry is probably one of the best high school coaches uh, I've I've ever seen, and he's got his strengths, but but we couldn't be more ecstatic 
than the coach we hired after coaching for 16 years in the SEC at both LSU and Old Miss uh, and Bill Armstrong. I mean, he, he's, he's fit in here well. He brings a high level of intensity and character building. And so we, we just think, I mean, they're going to be different. Every coach has different philosophies and every coach does things differently. But from what I've seen so far in the early practice and going, uh, I, I don't know if we're going to skip a beat with Coach Armstrong. He's on top of it. I was down there last fall, took a visit into your place. You didn't sign me or anything, but I, I took a visit down there and watched uh, those guys working out. I mean, there's there's no funny business there. I mean, they're they're working hard. Yeah, I mean, we jokingly say we're, we're development you. So, like, you're coming here, we're going to develop you. And to be developed, you got to work hard. And so, yeah, there's, there's, no, there's no shortcuts. And if it was easy, everyone would do it. You guys were amazing last year. Uh, so – You've been building this program, and, and bit by bit, we started seeing linkier academy, linkier prep players showing up in different places. You talked about Mason Jones, but uh, but in like my little world, in the Missouri Valley and Ohio Valley Conference teams, all of a sudden these these players started showing up, and there's a handful uh, in both of those leagues, and you've got some newer guys coming into the Missouri Valley and Ohio Valley Conference this year, and I may say this young man's name wrong. He's going to play at Evansville, Xavier Oko, Oko, Oko Chisholm, yep. yeah, Oko Chisholm, Xavier, you know, uh, yeah, lefty can shoot it and score the ball. Uh, I, I think his potential is through the roof. Very explosive kid out of Texas. I, I think the new staff is going to love him, and and I think he'll have a chance to contribute as a freshman if he continually buys in on the defensive end. Offensively, he, he's a naturally gifted athlete. The defensive end, I think, is always the biggest adjustment for freshmen. My friend Marcus Wilson will get him going. Don't worry. Uh, tell me about uh, Damian Mayo. He's a St. Louis guy that transferred down to you guys, and now he's going to play at Missouri State. Absolute steal. Uh, I, I wish this whole campus was full of Damian Mayos. I mean, he had Ivy Leagues after him. He's a he's an elite scholar. He does everything you want on and off the court. I know that Dana Ford and his crew up there are ecstatic with him in the summer he had. He does all the little things that contribute to winning that don't always end up in stat sheets, but probably one of my favorite players I've ever been around in 20 years. He's absolutely superb. But before we talk about more guys, how do players end up at your spot? I mean, the, you had a couple of the Chaminade kids move down there from St. Louis because, you know, maybe various reasons, but high level guys that all of a sudden, boop, they're out there. Great high school team here in St. Louis end up at link here and you've had guys from all over the country. How do they find you? How do you find them? Yeah. So there, there's a lot of ways to answer that question. Now we're, I mean, you just said it yourself, we were on ESPN. So mm -hmm. this year in our second year, we had way more people reaching out to us the, the year before it was just connections through the grassroots circuits and the EYBLs and the gauntlet series. And so just relationships we had and, and letting people know what we were doing. And then once they come down here, as you did, and see the resources and see how much access these kids will be, be in the weight room and the gym and protein and all those things, they realize coming here might really accelerate their growth and their development. And so most of the time when we get a kid to visit here, Harry, it's, it's a done deal. Most of the time. Not all the time, but most. And so because of those relationships we had with people that were in the basketball circuit and they were able to come see this place and be blown away, then they were able to help us get players and just say, hey, we've been down there. You need to go check it out. And then they go check it out. And the rest is history. Over in the Ohio Valley Conference, uh, Julian Norris is a really highly rated guy that signed with Moorhead State. Uh, tell us about him. Can shoot it. Can, can really shoot it. He was a key factor on that national championship run. Uh, I, I honestly think uh, his super strength is the opposite of Xavier. And I think he can really guard. I think he can get in and guard right away in the Ohio Valley. He was probably one of our best defenders, if not our best defender. Oftentimes, Coach Perry would put him on the team's best player. Um, and he's really savvy and smart. So he really understands the game. And, and I think if he sticks it out in this transfer portal world, I, I think he ends up being an all-league guy in the Ohio Valley. I really do. The There's a young man, Gal. I'm going to say his name wrong too. Gavin Elkamil is playing yeah. as Simo. Tell me about him. So another kid that I absolutely love and adore. I'd put him in the same category as Damian Mayo as far as gold. He came to me off an ACL injury, so he never got to play for us. And that was the year we were national championship runner-ups. And I think we win it with him. He, he's a leader, and he was a leader, and he sat next to me coaching that entire year. Uh, he was at Tulsa, and then obviously Frank Haith got let go. 
And so uh, he knew that he wanted to move on and he played for a phenomenal coach and a friend of mine, Brad Corden. And so uh, I think he's going to be a huge surprise to the Ohio Valley. And I think Brad Corn got an absolute steal, not just as a player, but as a character kid, too. He's a phenomenal kid. You mentioned Brad Corn. Uh, I was talking to some uh, a coach in the area, and they said, Who, "Who's building something right in in the Ohio Valley?" And I and I and I mentioned, you know, obviously people know about Moorhead State. They they've been at the top of the league, but I think UT Martin and Simo are some guys are, are some staffs that are really putting together the right thing. And 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 I think Brad Corden is one of those guys with a bright future, but he's trying to build the right way. And I would, I would honestly throw Brian Baroni in that yep, list. Me too. Brian, yep. Brian, Brian Baroni, in my opinion, is the smartest coach in the Ohio Valley because he has more linkier players than any other team. <laughs> he does. He's got a ton of them. We'll talk about those guys in a minute. I, you know, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a coach. I'm a coach fan or a fan of coaches. I love to talk to coaches and hear what they're trying to build and what they're trying to do. I was just talking with Steve Prom earlier in the week from Murray State, and I love to listen to guys and how they. And 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 I coach after coach talks about this idea of developing men, developing good citizens, and all that. Most guys that are in coaching aren't doing it for the headlines and and the big bucks, are they? Well, you you can't like like the, the, that's that's very low percentage of what your actual twelve month years takes up. And so if, if you don't really care about young student athletes and seeing character development, that that job will eat you up. And so and, and the greatest thing is, is, is you really can sniff the coaches out that really care about the student athletes and, and those that are just trying to climb ladders. And so you're absolutely right, Harry. Like you, you you've got to realize that the character development, the life formations part of college basketball coaching is way more greater than just coaching games and X's and O's. And you mentioned Brian Baroni. I know he wants family, family, family around that SIUE program. I'll talk about those guys. You, you've got, uh, I don't know, four or five guys there. The the Wright brothers have been there for like seven years. And uh, and, Dave, and and Desmond Polk is there. And then this year, Braden Wood. Can you just talk about any of those guys, just what you remember about them being with you and, and, and what you anticipate happening with them? Yeah, I, I think the Twins are set for a breakout year, and I'm proud of them for not transferring and leaving in a transfer portal world. They've mm. been extremely loyal to Coach Baroni. Uh, I, I think uh, Desmond is a great shooter, and he's become a great defender. I really think he's going to have a big year. You missed one name in there, Dewan Pruitt. Oh, that's right. Also, and 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 I really think he he's got a chance to be All League this year. And then uh, I think Braden Wood is a steal for Brian Baroni, uh, the left-handed point guard he got from us in the year he had for us. And so the, I, I think SIUE is going to surprise some people this year just because of the continuity mm. and the staff, how much of his staff or how much of his uh, student athletes and team he has returning. He didn't have a lot of transfers. And so a lot of these guys, he's got the all-freshman kid coming back. Uh, Ray Sean. And so, I mean, I, I really do think they got a chance to be special and I'm hoping the right twins provide some serious leadership for him as well. And, and Baroni got some new staff. He got some new assistant coaches in there that I think are really going to strengthen the culture and, and continually follow through with the culture that Baroni desires to build. So at, at the big national level, you guys are really making waves as well. You, uh, Omaha bill, bill you, maybe I'm saying that name, right? Iowa state. You've got guys at Xavier, Arkansas, Tennessee, Oh, Boise State. I did notice that in the list. Uh, Ohio State, Michigan. Uh, the major programs in the country are finding your players, aren't they? Well, yeah, by God's grace. You know that, Harry, and you know where I come from on that. But it's yeah, I've been blown away. If, if anybody would have told me 10 years ago that we'd be at where we're at, I, I would have told them no way. But, you know, when you're just faithful every day to just keep doing the right thing the right way, good things happen. And so I just think we've refused to cut corners and I, I don't think you can build anything great overnight and you got to be willing to get after it. Rome was not built in a day. And, and so we just have continually done the right thing the right way day after day after day. And now we're looking up nine years later, just blown away with what has happened. Bill, you uh, was ranked as one of the top guys in the country. Terrace Reed, a number of those guys were ranked in the, for sure in the top in the state of Missouri and, and in those upper echelons uh, nationally uh, that has to 
uh, I don't know, draw attention from other players and other programs back to you guys, doesn't it? Yeah, so so think about that. So, well, uh, Omaha actually went back to Iowa for a senior year to be with his mother. Phenomenal kid. Uh, love him to death. Him and I still stay in touch consistently. But but we have, for example, we have Jacoby Walter here. Jacoby Walter's committed to Baylor. Uh, he's a top 15 kid in the nation. He'll end up being a McDonald's All-American. And so you have a kid like that where all these coaches are coming in to see, and all of a sudden they see another kid that wasn't even on their radar and so why wouldn't a kid want to come to Link Prep or Link Academy where they can see? Or, or better example, Elliot Cadeau, who's a top 10 junior in the class of 2024. Uh, Hubert Davis is going to be here next week to see him. Scott Drew will be in to see him. And they're all coming to see Elliot. But then all of a sudden they're like, wait a minute. Who are these seven-foot twins that Link has from Shanghai, China? Where'd they come from? And so, which I've been blown away by them too, Harry. I just have worked them out the last couple of days. And they are way further along than I realized. They were out of the NBA Academy. And, Man, some people better figure them out quick because these kids are special. But anyways, to, back to the point is you're right. If you have high-level kids that are here, it's going to attract other high-level kids, and it's going to attract a whole lot more coaches. We're anticipating close to 100 coaches through here starting September 9th when they can be out for the first day until September 20th. So, uh, When I watched that national championship game and watched Jordan Walsh, who was a, a high-level guy for you guys on his way to Arkansas, um, you know, if I remember right, he might have had some foul trouble in that game, but but he looked like just this relentless kind of no quit kind of guy. Can you talk about him a little bit? Yeah, Jordan has what you can't coach, and and you even see it from a young age. Some kids that just refuse to lose and hate to lose. Like he's one of the most competitive kids I've been around, and um, not only was was he battling foul trouble, he he had an ankle injury he was playing mm-hmm. through. The, the semifinal and the national championship game. But that just tells you the type of kid that he is, that, that he is battling through an injury, and he refused to sit when, when he knew he wasn't 100%. And then Terrace Reed's on his way to Michigan. Uh, that's so interesting to me to see a guy of that level and then going to that program. There's That program is really on the resurgence as well. Yeah, Terrace is a phenomenal young man out of St. Louis, as you know. And I'm excited that Dewan Howard, as a big man, is going to develop him. I, I think Terrace has a serious potential to be in the NBA. He's really evolved his game. He, he didn't settle for being a back-to-a-basket guy like he was at Chaminade. He shot three balls for us really well. He pushed the ball up the floor for us. His game continually developed, and I know it's continually done that up in Ann Arbor this summer. And he's, he's really improved his guard skills. As you and I know, you look at the pro game, if you're a big and you don't have any guard skills, you don't got a chance anymore. Mm-hmm. Uh, and you guys have developed now a women's program. Uh, tell us about that. Yeah. So thanks for asking. We're, we're actually trying to develop more than just a women's program. So we're hoping to expand to a men's golf team, to a lacrosse team, to a women's basketball team, to a volleyball team, to an esports. Harry, I never thought I would say that, but <laughs> Sports are taking call. Everything needs to be redeemed, man. Mm. Everything needs to be. So, uh, but but we're just trying to build one of the elite Midwest academies because uh, there's not a lot of opportunities out here for the Midwest. Now you get to Florida and you get to the Northeast, and there's tons. But we're trying to be one of the first on the markets that have this academy that isn't only building great athletes, mm. but more importantly, developing great character within our student athletes. And uh, on the on the women's side, you signed a pretty high level head coach. So there's news on that. So Rob Pennell was any coach in the WNBA, and he was lined up to be here. And at last second, he got the head assistant job at Rice University. So oh. he's actually down at Rice now. Yeah. So you guys are on the look for that one at this particular point. Uh, yes. Yeah, so if you're listening to this or watching this, and you're a phenomenal women's basketball coach, give me a call. <laughs> There you go. We're recruiting. Hey, uh, before I let you go, um, when you step back, you you just said like, you know, you couldn't have fathomed this quickly being where you're at. Uh, And and, and you talked about growth of the program, meaning those other sports and so forth. What's what's on the far out horizon for Link Year Academy? Oh, man. You know, Harry, you know, you know how to make God laugh. Tell him your plans. (laughs) <laughs> uh, no, like in a, in a, in a, I'm a dreamer. Obviously, Link's not here if I'm not dreaming like crazy. My wife's patient enough to put up my dreams. But I, 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 honestly, I want to tell you this story real quick. It's really cool. So Julian Phillips from last year, who was also a McDonald's All-American, 
was uh, signed and committed to LSU. Will Wade gets fired. He gets out of his commitment, and he gets recruited in the spring. And so Bruce Pearl is coming down here to recruit him. I go pick up Bruce Pearl from the airport. Uh, he flies into Branson. We go, he visits with Julian, and then I'm taking him back. And, and I'm just sharing with Bruce, like, man, I'm discouraged, and, and sometimes it's just tough. And, and he just asks, he's like, well, what do you, what do you want to get at? Like, what's your hope with Linkier? What's your vision? And I said, honestly, I want to raise up more Tim Tebow's. Like, I, I want Linkier to have more Tim Tebow's, these yeah. athletes that have these platforms at colleges and universities that I think are greater than any other person has a platform. Like that four years, 18 to 22 years old, the way Tim Tebow impacted Gainesville campus is unbelievable. So I told him, I said, I just want this place to raise up more Tim Tebow's oh. that are going to impact this culture. So I'm telling him that. And I'm telling him, I just had a real discouraging week because of some donor stuff and different things. We pull up to drop him off on the tarmac back at the airport. True story, Harry. We pull up. A dark SUV pulls up behind it, gets out. It's Tim Tebow and his wife. They get out of the plane. <laughs> Tim Tebow and Bruce Pearl knew each other. Tim Tebow is here doing something with Bash Pro and Johnny Morris. And I just told Bruce that. I'm like, you have got to be kidding me. I just told Tim what I just told Bruce. And it was just, it was just one of those moments where like, okay, you see me. You yeah. see me, God. All right. Amazing. You know, the camp we run here, we, we preach the same thing you guys do about the I'm third life, you know, and one of our young ladies finished the program this summer, went to the military, got some big award at her boot camp, And they said, how did you learn how to do this to be this kind of a leader? And she said, well, at camp, I learned how to be third, you know, and, you know, so those are the things we long for, right? The things we're gunning for. Yeah. Amen. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, so tell me final thought is, uh, so the high school program and then the postgraduate program, they're obviously in, in, in different stratospheres. Um, how do they cohabitate there at in Branson? And then where do they go and play? Like, where could people find your teams? Yeah, thanks. So linkhoops.com has our whole schedule. So the academy will be playing in a lot of major tournaments. We're actually in the Bass Pro Tournament of Champions this year in Springfield, which we know is one of the best high school tournaments. We're in City of Palms. We're in the Gotham Classic. We're in the Hoop Hall Classic. So uh, on the website, we'll play a national schedule. And then the postgrad uh, will play in the Hoop Hall Classic as well, but they'll also play a lot of JUCOs in the area. We come up and play Swick right there with Coach Jay, who's done a phenomenal job there for years. We'll play Mobley in Mobley's Classic, and we'll play Kansas City. So, uh, And then postgrad will also go to a couple tournaments in Florida. But yeah, and then we also have our, our other postgrad team that's also full of some really talented players, and they'll play a lot of JUCOs in the Midwest as well. So Yeah, you have a national team, a regional team, and then the academy. I mean, there's three different, and, and they're maybe different levels of players, but all all of them are good players. They're all really good players. And as a matter of fact, last year we, we had 22 players go to four-year schools, whether that was Division One scholarships or Division Two scholarships. And out of those 22, 16 of them were Division One. We believe this year we have 22 players that are Division One scholarship players. It's pretty amazing. Adam Donier, thanks for your time today. Love what you guys are doing. Uh, love getting a little scouting report on players I'll be seeing uh, throughout the year as well. Wish you all the best. Terry, thank you so much. Appreciate you. That's Adam Donier from Link Year Prep down in Branson, Missouri. I'm Harry Schrader. This is the Valley Hoops Insider Podcast. Remember, since you've been there, make it a better place. We'll see you again real soon.